Why do so many business ideas look great on paper but don't make the leap into actual practice? Is there some kind of test that you can give your idea so that you can see problems coming before they actually arrive? Well, actually, yes, there is. It's called a strategy stress test, and it's been designed by INSEAD professors Michael Jarrett and Ki Hui. Gentlemen, welcome very much to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. What does your strategy test, stress test, actually do? Well, the strategy test, stress test, what it actually does is to help reveal the problems in your strategy. What we know is about 60% of strategy execution fails, and this reveals the reality and the problems. And what we hope to do is to show the hidden elements of strategy execution, those hidden traps, in making your strategy work. A lot of time, except that spend a lot of time on formulating a strategy, you know, trying to figure out what to do. And usually the process involves hiring consultants, involving top executives, uh, going to retreat, discuss, rediscuss, and after six months to a year, come up with, here are the company's mission and strategy of what we do. Yeah, right? but Michael's saying that it fails anyway. I mean, there's two-thirds of them are going to fail. Exactly. So they put in all this money exactly. up front and it That's still right. fails. Exactly. And, okay. and what we found that people, the executives, tend to, to assume that the ones have put too so much thought into knowing what to do, then the rest is relatively easy, mm. right? And that's what we found is that is the, the false assumption, right? Because as Michael just said, this is only 5% of the, of, of the task. The best managers, Lugers of IBM would say strategy is 5% thinking, which is about the preparing of what, knowing what to do, but there's a 95% that remains is about strategy execution. But how about the why? I mean, sometimes people come up with a great idea, but there's no need. Yes, and then you, in the, the first stress test of our uh, program is to help executives think whether they have a good strategy in the first place, because you're absolutely right, because there's no point moving to the next steps of executing it if, uh, if they suddenly realize through the various uh, frameworks that we'll be helping them with that they suddenly realize that the strategy is not good to start with. In that case, it's only a good learning point that's at no point to invest much further resources and time in executing a bad strategy. Okay, and the second step? So the second step is really saying, do you actually have a plan? So what we try and do is to help people identify what their goals, milestones are for executing the strategy. They have the right resources. And most people do this really well. And in fact, they'd probably think, I've got it. You know, I've got the project plan, and the idea of being rational, having a project management system will make the strategy work. This is the spreadsheet part. This is the spreadsheet part. This is where exactly. technology yeah, takes yeah, over. Yeah. So the so first thing about executives, I have a strategy, then let's have a structure. Structure means that I'm going to have an organizational chart. You know, which division, who is responsible for what. Mm -hmm. right? so once I have that one, my work from executive perspective is mostly done. The rest will be executed. Okay, and that's where they got this unpleasant surprises most of the time. You're, you're saying that that's, that's, that's a false assumption. Exactly. It, it's it's false security. And you can find that out in the second step? Or that comes up by the third step? It comes up by the third step. Okay, yeah. and the third step is? And the third step is really trying to identify what we call the hidden barriers to strategy execution. So you start off with, I've got the right strategy, I'm in the right direction. I have the right structures, I have a lovely project plan. We're ready to go, and this tends to be a very rational-based approach. But we know when we're implementing strategy and people are involved, things go awry. And there are three or four things that we've identified from our research that tells us what, what goes awry. So the first thing are the cultural factors within an organization. So if you remember IBM, going back way back, it, uh, it, was, it failed during the 1990s, partly because it had such an old culture and it couldn't respond to the needs of the market at the time. Another thing that we know is that organizations have uh, in and out groups. So there's this political dimension. I'm not just talking Machiavellian politics, I'm talking about intergroup rivalry. Uh, and this can, if you like, break down the kind of cohesion in the organization. And so the emotions and the non-rational elements override this, the spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah. And what's even worse is that people don't even know it. And to, to, to elaborate on what Michael just said, in my research I shows that, I can see that, that work life is very political and emotional. 
But those two are really bad words, right? You're not supposed to, a good employee, a good executive is not supposed to be political, right? And secondly, he or she is not supposed to be emotional because this is to, it's worth to, 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 to be, you are, you're making nonsense, you don't have business logic. Try to be less emotional and try to be rational, right? That's the kind of advice that you give that. Therefore, people who feel very emotional about these things, they are not express what their true thoughts are, and true feelings are about the strategy. But then it comes out of sabotage or some other way. If people don't want to do it, they have all kinds of ways. Exactly. Of so, so, so what we see here is that we would, our program will make these issues that can be taboo in organizations legitimate discussion. Let's discuss about these issues. You may disagree or not agree with it, but let's surface it and we discuss it and it's part of the implementation plan in order to make your strategy work. So is, is step four like where you work on, on all of this and sometimes it can't be fixed maybe? Yes, and then we, we, we would have a, we, in step number four, we would provide executives with a number of research produced tools that we have developed over the last uh, few years in order to focus them on, on help that may, may not be aware of, right? such as for example, there are certain ways to mobilize the emotional energy of people. And that's something that many executives have not been trained into that one. We would focus people on thinking about the time dimension execution, you know, such as the timing, when do you do certain things, the, the, the good time to do it and the bad time to do it. Step five is really having identified these uh, barriers, having identified what we can do, do you have the skills to implement it? Ah. Like, can you actually do can it? Can you actually do it, yeah. <laughs> ah. And there's something about, you know, the knowing-doing gap in the sense that we know what to do, but how do we actually do it? So... But don't some, most people know that right away or, or not? That they, that they have the skills or not? Yeah. Well, I think the problem is, is um, in the world where of social media where everybody knows everything about everything, yeah, um, I find that a lot of people who draw on social psychology are at the back of reading a magazine, okay? So they have a sense that they know it, yeah. So what we're trying to say is that it's not just about knowing, but then how can you translate that into action? Uh, and so we have a, this, uh, this, the fifth test is really about looking at do you have the skills? So we do kind of a skill audit around what are the key competencies to make change work. So we look at some of the consulting skills that you might draw on, look at some of the, the ways in which we build rapport, how we can mobilize people for action, uh, maybe taking people through some of the the material that we will have taken people through before. Is there something, something to add to that? Most people would say that I know how to give feedback. I give feedback all the time. Mm. But you look at, looking at most of us here working here, or most employees, is how did your boss give you feedback on how you can improve? Mm. Just asking them how happy about the feedback they receive. And most people could be humbled mm. by, the, you know, by the employees' responses about feedback, about the start giving feedback. You know, about feedback is about giving improvement, but how, how often managers were able to, to focus on articulating what you're doing well and why you're doing it well and what you need to improve and why. And people most of the time do not take the time to doing that. So most people are not that good in coaching in the first, first place. And our program would focus people's attention on the skills of coaching as an example. I mean, the research also suggests that something like 60% of managers don't know how to implement change. They don't have the skills. And that's the, that's the piece that we're really trying to respond to. So it's not just us um, thinking about this, oh, what should we do? It's, it's actually based on uh, research that's out there. And so what's the sixth step? The sixth step is the most important one. That's why it's the last. Yeah. And, and really it's about having got the skills, can you have these replicated and implemented into the system? So, and there's this old adage about, you know, teach a man or woman to fish or, or do you fish for them? And this is really about the, the analogy of getting them to fish for themselves. Most organizations do not learn, right? We found that what happens when an executive makes mistakes? What is the, usually the usual f reaction? He gets to hide tired. it or mm. blame it on the, to other people or blame it to the external environment. It's not, you know, the economy is not working well, right? You know, it's not about my performance. When I succeed, it's due to me, of course, and my skills, of course. That's what I need the, all the high pay, of course. 
but you know when it doesn't go well so then it's okay but if everybody is blaming everybody else there's no learning from our own mistakes and we know that the strategy never works the first time right it needs to go to an iterative cycle. That's why we build the six steps as an iteration. It has to go in loops all the time, right? You have to go back to the strategy as the, as the, to make the first step. Once you learn from your mistakes, you have to refine and revise the initial strategy plan, right? Based on the experiences and all the data from your own organization. And that would allow you to refine the plan and you lower go to the six steps again. And that's the whole the, 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 the mechanism of our program. Thank you very much, Professors Kriwi and uh, Michael Jarrett, for being on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you.